All right, thank you for joining us. This is Campfire Chronicles, episode 21. My name is Brian, and today we've got the whole crew. We've got Andrew next to me. Yep. We've got Robbie on satellite. <laughs> and we've got Thomas probably somewhere over there, <laughs> still in California. <laughs> I'm coming in from California right now. <laughs> So we've got a pretty interesting topic, actually, that came up on um, my uh, Patreon live stream. Uh, but really quick, um, if you guys uh, like to, would like to help us out, make more videos, uh, you can check out um, supporting us at Patreon. Uh, join our community for as little as $2. You can get access to things like early uh, release on the videos. Um, really cool things like postcards, commentaries, um, commentaries, uh, bloopers, and we're starting to do you know weekly more live updates, streams. and yeah. we've just started doing Patreon live streams, so it's going to be really fun. There's there's a whole party going on there that you're missing out on. <laughs> 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 so, anyways, uh, like I said, the topic today is something that came up during one of our Patreon live streams, and um, it was well, someone asked me if I enjoyed nature more than you guys um, because of like. The job that I work, um, does it like make me? I guess yearn for the outdoors more, and, and I guess Thomas could technically relate too. And when I answered it, I said I don't think I enjoy it more than you guys, but I think we all enjoy it differently. Yeah, yeah. And I would just wanted to hear. I, I kind of just gave my thoughts on what I thought you guys, how you guys would enjoy nature, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts about it. Um, so. Uh, Andrew, do you want to like start off with what? Well, actually, it's it's interesting that they said uh, the whole thing with the job because I remember I used to crave nature a lot. I mean, it's not like I don't enjoy nature or crave it, but I used to really, really get obsessed with like wanting to go outside when I lived in the city, like on campus as a student. Because um, just every day it'd be like you're stuck in the dorm, you're stuck around all these like buildings and traffic, and the air doesn't even smell clean. <clears throat> and so I started yearning for like any sort of experience. And I remember like one spring break. Um, I really wanted to go backpacking and nothing ended up happening so like the last weekend of the break or something I just like camped out in this small plot of woods like <laughs> in the middle of a residential area yeah. I like went back there set up a tarp uh, made a little campfire no it was one... in the middle of winter and it was like it was, Wait, like was early that on spring. campus no 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 so this was that, there's another good story with that though <laughs> uh, this was uh, like in near my parents neighborhood like within walking or biking distance um, but it was someone else's neighborhood. Thankfully, no one called the police on me for having a campfire. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. It was just like a small patch of forest with a bike trail going through it. Just that just happened to be in the middle of a neighborhood. Yeah. And it was it, like Andrew said, it was like early spring, but it was still cold at yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. And this was back when we were very still like novice. <laughs> and <laughs> so I actually drove out there at like. Oh, so you mean just the other day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I drove out there at 11 p.m. and walked all the way to the bike trail to find him. And I just went like, so you, you good? Like, you don't want to come home or anything? <laughs> I forget, did you deliver any, like, firewood or something? Or I don't think am I, I remembering wrong. I might have brought you something, but I don't think it was firewood. Okay. I might have brought you, like, maybe extra clothes. Maybe, but. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, in, in, so in terms of, so that was, like, in the past, like, you definitely felt this yearning for nature. Yeah. So, I yearn often. <laughs> <laughs> so nowadays, how would you, ex how would you say that you choose to enjoy nature, you know? Like, I, when, you're, when you're outside, mm -hmm. do you find yourself always doing the same sort of thing? Like, are so, you doing the same thing? I will say that, like, as far as a camping experience, backpacking is still one of my favorite things. Um, but I, I think I'm, like, less of a purist when it comes to, like, a raw wilderness experience. Like, part of me thinks it's really cool when you're backpacking and you also go through, like, parts that are a bit touched by civilization. So, like, in Japan the campsites with all those things set up like that was super cool mm -hmm. the idea of hiking through like a town on the at sounds really cool to me yeah um but i think in general like if i'm just going to the park my favorite thing is just like looking for wild edibles or just different types of plants and mushrooms that are sprouting up like yeah. that's like when i do that that's when i still feel that same like sense of yearning that i felt back <laughs> in the, like it just has like it clicks somehow yeah. you know that, that's what I said on my live stream. I said, you, you're always, like, looking for those edibles and yeah, those, yeah. those things to point out. And it's, like, for me, it's not even so much about the views. Like, that's always a great bonus. But, like, some of the best times I've had are just in a normal, like, not not super extraordinary patch of woods. But there's a lot of things growing and popping up. and mm -hmm. It's like an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was talking about uh, how, how I thought about Robbie. Now, obviously, I'm really close with Andrew. So I feel like I know him better. And for you, Robbie, I said that 
<laughs> one of the things you do I feel most... like you're going to get it spot on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like there's no way I can miss this, but you're, you're uh-huh. always looking for that shot, basically. You know? Yeah. Because we've always yeah. talked about how if we went camping, it would be literally impossible for you to not film it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because, like, before I was filming everything in my life all the time, like, I was kind of doing that in my head anyway. Mm-hmm. Just, like, looking... It's I'm always, like, looking for that next big view. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think that's why I, I still consider Dolly Sods like one of my favorite places is because there was so much variety mm-hmm. and just places that you d- things you don't expect to see. Yeah. And just like it has that sense of adventure. I think for me, the biggest thing from the outdoors that I'm trying to get is that sense of adventure, yeah. something new that you've never experienced before and far away from home that you've never experienced. That- and just like not that not a comfort, but not a discomfort. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Just like. You're not nestled into civilization's warm embrace. Yeah. Like you're kind of like out on your own out there. Now, I, I just had a thought, and then this probably can relate to all four of us, but would you say that our interest in video games has somewhat influenced the way we enjoy or see nature too? Totally. Absolutely. I mean, I would think so. Yeah. 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 I mean, as often as we say, is like, doesn't this look like Hyrule? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I think that's like huge, dude. It's like almost like <coughs> going into nature now is realizing the potential that video games showed Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. us it's like oh man look at all the possibilities you know and i just didn't realize it was actually real i was was yeah no i remember when we went to hawking hills on that first trip like i remember my mind was blown that scenery like that existed and that was just hawking hills (laughs) yeah 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 (laughs) yeah that's like my parents weren't outdoors people so they we never went outdoors so i just it never occurred to me Mm -hmm. i guess yeah, I will say, um, oh, you were saying something about trying to find the next big view. I, I totally lost my train of thought. But <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, Thomas, you're the only one who I didn't address in the live stream, because honestly, well, no, actually, I think I did. Um, but I didn't really know how, you know, how as well what you would say, because I know you love going out there and you love doing the day hikes and things like that. I always feel like you're more you're out of all four of us. You're the one who's like you want to get some distance under your feet. Oh yeah, like that. yeah. I think I don't think you're wrong there. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I don't like to be that guy that's like, oh, it's, it, it, you know, if you only hike two miles, that's not a hike. That's not a hike. Because <laughs> honestly, if you get outside, I'm just glad that you got outside. I'll, yeah. I'll say um, thanks, Dad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll say one of my, um, you know. Ohio doesn't have a whole lot of long distance hiking. Um, Mm -hmm. And when you do it, it's basically the same view for hours and hours and hours. But when I started hiking out here and hiking mountains, you know, to to get to the top of a mountain, that's, Mm -hmm. that's a good six, six, seven miles just to get to the top. And then you got to go down. And so I felt like here day hikes to me, they're, they're, they're a lot more, it's a lot more rewarding out here when you can like say, "Oh, I did 15 miles in a single mm-hmm. day," and like you know, at the end of it, I, I feel so accomplished. I've I've mm-hmm. done 15 miles. I made it to the summit. I'm alive. I saw some incredible views, and now I'm gonna go home and cook something up. So, so Thomas is kind of like that, the quintessential backpacker. <laughs> he wants to he wants to get to the destination. He wants to see the views. He wants to you know feel that like bit of exhaustion and that that good feeling about what he did so i would almost call myself a hiker before a backpacker yeah Mm -hmm. because i love hiking and Mm -hmm. i love you know being comfortable Mm -hmm. while hiking and having everything i need in my pack but Mm -hmm. i'm not like someone who's like oh i can't wait to go here and just set up a tent and just stay here you know i'm i'm happy i'm I'm happy (laughs) i'm happy like putting in my miles and if there's a tent there at the end of it so be it i'm happy but i'm also happy just going back to my car too and yeah See this. This reminded me of the thought that I had. Um, so, I I feel like it's interesting because you, like I, I mean, distance matters to me too, and it seems to matter more to you than us. But like, uh, <laughs> I'm wording this really badly. But basically, for me, like I I almost care. Like I care about distance, and I feel accomplished if I do a long hike. But I almost care more if we're talking about like an accomplishment. I care more about how long I'm in the wilderness, and not necessarily how how far I've hiked. Mm. So, for example, like. I, I would rather, I get more enjoyment out of like staying in the wilderness for a week or two weeks, even if I didn't travel all that much. Like to me, there there's an accomplishment there that's kind of interesting. Yeah. And um, the other thought I had was just 
the the idea of comfort like i feel like we all have different standards of what we want to feel mm -hmm. and to me like i mean i think to all of us to an extent but for me the discomfort is actually like part of the experience like mm -hmm. when robbie and i went backpacking in the smokies in 2012 we were really hungry but there was part of that that was actually really enjoyable because it was just so different mm, yeah. and it kind of like pushed yourself and i also feel like sometimes like at least back in the day i really wanted to be like an ascetic monk or whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah there was definitely yeah. some of that at the beginning yeah, for me like too fasting it's like you wanted to be like no i'm throwing off the shackles of civilization <laughs> you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, I, and i'd agree with you until that starts affecting your uh your performance too so I, you know, when i go hiking these 15 mile hikes i'm like oh god i'm so hungry uh, mm -hmm. I love the idea that I'm actually feeling this hunger, but if I'm going to get to the top and I need to watch myself, then I need to put something in my body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that kind of goes back to the whole thing. Like, I, if I were going to do something like where I was fasting in the woods, I just, I would just sit on a hill or something <laughs> oh. and not make myself. <laughs> well, see, I, that also brings up the whole, like, idea of the like the first day or the first night you're out camping, you're still kind of in that period of adjustment. Mm -hmm. And then as you kind of reach the second and third day, you started acclimating to the fact that you're out there and, yeah. you know, your feet are tired, you know, you're expecting that, that meal at the end of the day with your tent. And, and it just like, it starts to grow on you mm -hmm. and you start mm -hmm. enjoying it more and more. Cause that's how I feel is usually the first day we're hiking <laughs> out there. I'm like, oh, this is okay. <laughs> and then, and then by the time it gets to like the second or third day, I'm like, yeah, I want to, I'm going to do some hiking and I can't wait to get to that campsite and cook up some food. And you really start to yeah. notice the little things again. It's the whole inertia there. thing. Yeah. Like the, the longer you're doing something, the more it feels like you want to keep doing that. And that kind of, yeah. that's also why I enjoy like those discomforting yeah. things. Cause I think for me, like one of the most frustrating episodes I filmed with you guys was actually Yellowstone because we were oh. only doing like two miles. I'm like, Come on, guys. <laughs> you know, why aren't we doing five or six per day? Come on. That's a light day. <laughs> that, that campsite we stayed at in Yellowstone, I feel like that was, like, almost the start of the trail. <laughs> <laughs> it actually wasn't, but it, it, it was like could have it three, kind of felt like that. Miles in, it I was think. two miles in, I barely. Yeah, no, no that's pretty good. <laughs> I feel that's like pretty good for us. if and when we do get around to doing an extended trip, like maybe, let's say, five or six days right then we'd always we'd start out at the beginning like doing a few miles but then towards the end we'd really be pushing like probably maybe six or seven miles mm -hmm. i mean which is a lot for us when we consider the filming yeah and you know, and we we'd kind of get into a flow of things yeah what i met up i met up with some uh, pacific crest trail hikers back last year um when i was hiking part of the sierras and uh you know i was worried because i i love hiking but i'm not a fast hiker Mm -hmm. and I met up with these guys, and they were with another group, and I was asking, how many miles do you average a day? I said, oh, typically about 30 or so. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my there's, God, I, there's dude. There's no way I could do 30 miles, even with, like, no pack. Like, optimal conditions. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's no, no way. I've, like, I've, on a paved miles. ground. <laughs> yeah. I've done 30 miles once, and I think, honestly, I think we could all do it again. Um, we could all do it. It's just... It's just, just not, not day after day. <laughs> yeah, it's just not comfortable, you know. Same I, I honestly feel like that would cause problems for my feet because I've had mm. I've had some foot trouble, but um, I, like that required like going thirty miles requires yeah. a good a good amount of conditioning. To That's do that. a lot. That's yeah. like no joke. Yeah, I will say. Um, oh man, I lost my thought again. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to blurt it out when you got it. <laughs> Wait, okay, so we were talking about distance hiking. Oh, oh, I was going to... No, never mind, go ahead. I was going to say, Mount Whitney was 22 miles, and we didn't do too bad on that. That was 22 miles round yeah, trip or one miles way? round trip. Yeah, but that's not in one day. No, 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 but it's also a lot of uphill. Yeah, that's you know, true. If you, if you oh, even it out. I mean, it's... I didn't go with you guys, but from what I saw in the video, it seemed like you paced yourselves pretty well, though, too, I which think probably helps a lot. Packing light helped a whole lot, too, Yeah, and, like... That probably the training. But. That's what I can't understand with you guys is how how and why do you pack so much stuff? I mean, like I I love just like getting <laughs> well, as define little... pack so much stuff. Well, I mean, because I... about the only thing we get really extravagant with is the food. Sometimes yeah, I was gonna say the food is a big part, and sometimes I carry extra things in my backpack in case like we happen on, upon a circumstance where like using a saw would look kind of cool or like be useful or like I don't know. I, I carry this like little magnifying lens in my thing just. In case conditions are right for like a solar fire, I, mean, I try and I try and keep my pack to under twenty pounds. And you guys, well, see, 
I, I can answer at least for myself. The camera. problem before was that all of our stuff was too heavy. Yeah, so my backpack time. by itself is six pounds. My sleeping bag was six pounds. And my tent was six Jeez. pounds. So that's 18 pounds just for the that's big like three. That's like ridiculous even for a non-ultralighter. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, that's why my pack was always so heavy. I mean, I've recently uh, upgraded the tent and the sleeping mm -hmm. bag, but well, I, I never brought that much stuff. So let know? me ask you this, Thomas. What do you, on, on a, let's say you were going on a backpacking trip. Mm -hmm. What would you bring? Like, what do you bring? And like, well, all right. So I got my, I got my pack. I have mm -hmm. my sleeping bag and I don't okay. know how much, I don't know how much these weigh individually. I got my pack. I got my sleeping bag. Yeah. I got my tent. Uh huh. Uh, I'd say all in all, though, that's maybe about 10 pounds, maybe a little over 10 pounds for all those, for I, those three. Okay. Well, I mean, depending on the, the sleeping bag can make a huge difference depending yeah, on I, what I mean, kind I, of weather we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't go winter camping, so it's not a big sleeping bag. Yeah, it's a yeah, really light true. sleeping bag. Yeah, uh, you're out in Southern California where it's like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I get a little extravagant when I bring my uh, sleeping mat, my inflatable sleeping mat, which mm -hmm. uh, really helps a lot. Uh, then on top of that, you know, I bring my snacks, my map. <laughs> um, you know, if I if I'm bringing food, ooh, food, I'll bring food and. Um, I mean, if you bring food. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. You know, so, we're talking about typical backpacking, day high. so, so you know, I assume you bring food. Well, what I'm saying is, if you know, if I'm, if I'm bringing like smoked mackerel, like some fish or some steak <laughs> or something like that, versus like a dehydrated. It's like meal. Animal Crossing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like a heavy, heavy dinner or a light dinner. It's like, am I bringing the candles for mood lighting? <laughs> <laughs> the bubble bath. <laughs> you know what the great, the great irony of this is? is <laughs> in 2012 on our Smokies trip, Thomas definitely packed the most. The most. <laughs> no, I did. And, you know, honestly, after that, I, I, I swore I would never pack yeah. as much as I did. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it, no one can fault you for making that mistake, on. but it's just really was, funny. How, how much water do you carry, Thomas? Uh, t uh, I usually bring my two and a half liter and then another for Nalgene. Uh -huh. See, I, I feel like, yes, we could all easily cut a lot of weight if we spent the money mm -hmm. because there's definitely weight to be cut here and there. Yeah. Like I could buy a, like a 40 degree sleeping bag and save like three pounds or something, but I don't want, and I don't need to spend the money. I'm okay. carrying. I'm okay with the weight that I carry. Like mm -hmm. at this point, my packs reached a point um, where I'm okay with it. And, but then there's just a lot of other things that I'm not really willing to give up such as, um, like an air mat to sleep on when I sleep on the ground because yeah, yeah. I just I can't sleep anyway. on the ground without one because it yeah. ruins my night. Um, so I don't know. It's just it's just I don't want to make any compromises at this point mm -hmm. to my gear, and I don't want to have like a set of ultralight gear for when the season or the weather accommodates it at this point. So yeah, it's nice to just have one set you can rely on. Kinda. Yeah, which actually uh, another thing, obviously that. It, we're not uh, mentioning is the camera gear. Like the camera gear also adds yeah. weight, which brings me to the thing I forgot to say, which is like um, one aspect of nature, like how I enjoy nature, is I really like to be out there and like not restricted by any sort of time or destination or anything like that. Like I like to yeah. be able to, and th this is sort of lost because we are filming and because we have to make it to the campsite while also filming and like hope that we still have daylight, etc. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I I really like being able to just hike on a trail and just meander and like get distracted if I want to uh, mm -hmm. stop and take a break and like write in my journal stuff like that yeah that, that's what I was gonna say is usually the when I find the most enjoyment out of our trips is when we get to not worry about what time we have to be at a place and we just we're just like for example we sit at the side of a river and yeah. we're just you just got downtime basically you know you hear like the wind and the birds and things like that and you just close your eyes and you're like yeah it's so great to be out here and that's, yeah. that's just what I like I, I, I agree with you after <clears throat> I feel like I've earned it if I hike one mile I'm like <laughs> okay let me just sit here I'm like no come on I gotta you know I gotta get yeah. to at least eight miles before I can feel like I'm just a fine well, I, I can kind of relate to you with that because if that was if that wasn't the case then there wouldn't be anything stopping mm -hmm. me from just going sitting in my yard, mm -hmm. which is nice. It's a nice experience, right? <laughs> right. But it's just not the same. It's not on the same level. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I probably mentioned it in some other stream or podcast <clears throat> or something, but I really do think we should all go yeah. on a hiking trip. 
no filming yeah. just not for an episode because we haven't done that since we started yeah. the show at least oh, i haven't done that's it. i have a couple times but yeah i'd like to do that yeah <laughs> well i mean that's the thing i don't think me and brian have yeah <laughs> that, that's the thing though is like that's part of the, the enjoyment of backpacking that uh we might forget about it's like the, the just the complete and utter freedom to do whatever you want yes. on your own time yes. and like yeah not being restricted to anything <laughs> and like you can hike eight miles and do that if you're not filming too like yeah. it's it's you have so much more time <laughs> yeah you're not filming. yeah yeah <clears throat> well um actually i wanted to ask <laughs> it sounded like nobody else had anything else to contribute i thought you were right. no i didn't <laughs> <laughs> well that's it for no. <laughs> <laughs> what i wanted to ask you guys though is do you guys think that depending on the season you're hiking in it affects your enjoyment oh. or affects the way you tend to enjoy things cuz yes cause... <laughs> <laughs> next well, question Andrew's please still able to find you know edibles and mushrooms yeah. and stuff to, regardless of the season but you know depending on the season it may be more difficult i don't know man after the shawnee episode or semi yeah. episode i guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> i well okay like i think every season has its perks and its beautiful things about it and like it depends on where you go obviously but and like the last episode we did or the the one we just released it's like in this very bleak sort of wintry setting mm -hmm. um the one without the snow and like that can get a little that can be kind of a downer after you've seen that environment and yeah. that that time of year for too long but there's still something beautiful about that but i i still think like during the spring when fresh greens are popping out of the ground it's like there's something about that that stands out a little bit more for me it's like a salad bar growing from the ground <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to put it i guess <laughs> but no it's just it's like you hear all the sounds too and it's just like life is happening yeah. out out in california it's a little different because and this is one of the great things I'm going to miss is no matter what season it is, there's always some place you can go hiking and be warm yeah. or be mm. cold. So, for instance, yeah. even though it's winter right now and there's a ton of snow up in the mountains, not a ton, but a lot, um, I'm able to go out to get, I'm able to go out in the desert, be warm. It's in the 70s and I can look up and I can see snow capped mountains. Now, let's say I wanted to go to those mountains. I'm going to be freaking cold. But if I wait a few months, I can go up into those mountains and, you know, I'll be, I'll be, it'll be in the 60s. It'll be nice. It'll be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can, you got that, uh, you got that differentiation that you can, you got options, basically what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one thing with the Midwest is like during the summer, there's no escape from the humidity and heat, really. <laughs> You're a slave to the elements. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Go ahead, Rob. I was going to say, do you find yourself preferring something more than another? Like, do you feel a dread when we camp in a certain Ooh. season? <laughs> you know, I never really feel any dread towards any particular season, but I think what happens just on a more general level for me mm -hmm. is that I like all the different seasons. Winter is my favorite season, mm -hmm. but with every season, by the end of it, I'm always just waiting for the next mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Yeah. But, I mean, that doesn't really relate to hiking at all because we don't go hiking so many times that I get sick of the season while hiking. Yeah. But, um, see, yeah, actually, I haven't thought too much about the difference difference between the seasons. It's just, like, weather is a factor. Like, in Shawnee, it was really hot, and sometimes you're just like, man, I can... I can or, like, in Germany, it was really hot and uncomfortable. I was like, yeah. man, I kind of just want it to be cold. <laughs> <laughs> like, this might just be boiling it down to, like, what's your favorite season? But for me... I mean, again, I love all the seasons, but for some reason, spring stands out. And, like, you were just saying, by the end of a season, you're waiting for the next. I think spring's the only one where I don't. Because, like, by the end of summer, it's like, okay, it's kind of hot. I want to see a change. By the end of yeah. fall, it's like, okay, everything's bare. I want snow. But at the end of spring is just like, oh, there's more green things. <laughs> That's true. More flowers. <laughs> it's like, after spring, it's just summer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, I wish this would last longer. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny. I, I haven't really thought about, like any particular differences in how I feel mm. in nature mm. between the seasons. It's because it's like the variety is kind of what I'm looking for anyway. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. it's, you know, it'll always change soon enough. I, I might also be waxing romantic about spring because it's about to become spring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like on my mind. It's like the longest winter too. It's like, God, man, remember that time when it was spring <laughs> once? <laughs> like when we came back from, um, Oh, Seneca. Oh, Seneca. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Seneca and Falls. it was like, 
65 degrees for the next yeah. week and we're like well i guess spring's here but yeah no, yeah it's... like in the last week it was just snowing yeah. and like people are on their spring break <laughs> yeah so i feel like yeah, so once weird. it starts teasing you with the next season you yeah. you kind of you're already moving on to that next one i always like during the summer i always look at the leaves and i'm like wow the trees are so full I, I don't even remember what they look like bare and then now i'm like i don't even remember what they look like <laughs> when they have leaves <laughs> yeah. all right well uh let's take a quick break and then uh, we'll, we'll move on to the next subject. All right, well, we're back. And actually, we are going to take some time to talk about our most, most recent episode, which is going to be... <laughs> our most recent episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Hoosier. And Hoosier. Yeah, which was in Hoosier National Forest. Um, and I, I feel like we don't do this enough in... Yeah, which is, I think, we sh- well, we're not consistent enough with our podcast. Well, I think that was the original intention of the podcast because it's like, suppo- I don't know, I, I found some art I made like a long time ago before we even had the channel, and it's like Campfire Chronicles, the <laughs> companion <laughs> podcast to the show. And it's like, <laughs> not at all what it, it's everything's yeah. very just tangential and yeah, not that's kind of the commentary now. But anyway, yeah, but um, so yeah, I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on Hoosier because the funny thing was when you guys were working on the, the episode mm-hmm. I was literally telling Andrew like I literally don't remember anything from that trip <laughs> like I could remember vivid detail what happened on the one after that yeah. and like, part of Hoosier. that is because they, they were a week apart so it's like yeah but, kinda... but after I watched the Hoosier episode I was like oh yeah that that was actually a pretty decent trip you know yeah, yeah. and and it was uh, there was a lot more to it that I can't believe I forgot um, but I think one of the big things was that we tried so desperately to get a trip with snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so we were so dead set on that weekend that we were just like, well, we're just going to go yeah. film at Hoosier. <laughs> yeah, and actually that that episode was going to be earlier, but Robbie got sick and then... Oh, right, yeah. 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 Forgot but, about that. And we actually missed like some of the big yeah. snowfall in uh, Indianapolis and Columbus during that. But don't worry, the next one... <laughs> It's got some yeah, stuff. Except for it, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I think that was probably the one that that one probably ranked up there as one of the colder episodes mm-hmm. that we've done. Um, yeah. Because I, I don't know what yeah, you actually. guys think the coldest one was. I think Robbie, you say it's Mohican or Kumatori. Well, Mohican wasn't really an episode. That, I'd say true. yeah, Ko- Kumatori was the first Kumatori, one that came to mind. But now that yeah. I think about it, Dolly Sod's Winter. I remember being really cold. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't remember that being as bad. Oh, I guess just the first night when we were taking so long to get the fire going. But this one was probably the coldest for the longest. Like, the cold never really let up. I always feel like my basis for how cold a trip is Mm -hmm. is if I go and buy new gear after it. (laughs) 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 Because after that one, after Hoosier, I went and um, I bought a a layer of, like, fleece pants. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And... um, some outer like it's kind of like a windbreaker out, outer pants that are waterproof well and we should also mention you were using your hammock so yeah that, added so to that it, was def- yeah that was my first time using the hammock mm. um and i think i said it in the episode but i intended to test it beforehand but i never got around to it <laughs> and it was also kind of warm a lot of time beforehand i feel like well it was it was such a weird experience because so when we were in kumatori there were a lot of times where we were in the sun or in the shade but like mm. the minute we were in the shade and we stopped walking, we got cold. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this one, I felt like the temperature was a lot more consistent at the very least. Just like always cold. Yeah, but but you know you were moving and you were, you mm-hmm. felt okay. But then those nights were really brutal at some points. Yeah. Did it's, you guys have down jackets in Japan? Yeah. Okay. Did I? I don't think I did uh, actually. Andrew, and I don't. Know I, I wore my like typical winter coat and some other stuff oh. underneath. Oh, okay. Because yeah. this is the first time I've had a down jacket and. Wow, what a difference it makes! Yeah, wait, you didn't have it on. Whit- I have one on Whitney at all. And Kumatori oh, no, had that didn't. like that sweater jean jacket kind of combo. Oh yeah, yeah it wasn't even warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that didn't look very. Well. <laughs> but yeah, the the well, I was gonna say the mm-hmm. the nights that I had in the hammock were, I, I'm pretty much set on using a tent now in the winter because of that, um, until maybe I get some new winter hammock see part of me now wants to try the hammock in the winter and just see how i how i do it well uh, it's not it's different though Uh, in Mm -hmm. my opinion it's different it's like when you're camping in a tent and maybe you don't have an under uh or um, a mat yeah it it's still bearable yeah because there's not wind like hitting your back but when you've got 
when you're lying in that hammock and there's literally just a thin layer of mm-hmm. like material between you and just <laughs> wind blowing constantly, it is really bad. Yeah. yeah. The, so even the, with the underquilt, it's well, I did have the underquilt, but it, the underquilt wasn't. It doesn't enough. block all the wind. Well, I think it was kind of windy the first night, and just I don't know. I, I just remember my backside <laughs> always being cold, and whenever I turned, it just felt cold. <laughs> It's like the opposite of a rotisserie chicken. Instead of like cooking it, you're just like a rotisserie that's what, freezing. That's what we need to do is like light a tiny fire underneath him. <laughs> Have a little there motor he is, that just spins the hammock. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say the first night on the trip was... Many parts of it were really toasty for me. I even had a dream, and it, we say this in the episode, but I had a dream that it was so toasty. Actually, in that dream, I was like talking with Thomas on like some screen porch... Well, let's go back in the tent because it's so warm in there. <laughs> I remember you guys talking about how warm you were in the tent. And I was lying in my hammock going like, man, that would have been nice. <laughs> but the second night was definitely a bit chillier after we switched some gear around. But. Yeah. I think um, if you do try hammock camping, you should definitely at least do it in the spring. At least yeah, once. Just to, yeah. Because it, it's really, oh man, it, it you kind of get a little bit of both the tent and the tarp experience. Because mm-hmm. you can kind of leave your tarp not completely on top of your hammock so you still get like a breeze i really want a side entry tent yeah 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 i don't know but what 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 were your thoughts on that trip rob like i know that you were really nice warm the first night right uh yeah so the first night was super nice and warm the second night i don't remember oh yeah so the second night i was just not comfortable sleeping i think it was that midnight snack of all the nuts that we had it was probably a bad idea <laughs> but that cracked just, me up when i first saw that you guys just sitting there munching on nuts <laughs> it was so weird we went to bed really early and then suddenly me and andrew just both realized we were both wide awake yeah <laughs> and we were it's like, like at 10 p.m yeah you want some nuts yeah why not <laughs> um but actually what i was gonna say is my favorite part of that whole trip was all the food like oh and not even like the meals the meals were great good job andrew but the, <laughs> the creamy broccoli soup or whatever that you made that morning and you put yeah, the kale yeah. in brian oh my god it was so perfect <laughs> that was a really good breakfast <laughs> that was great dude just I like totally such a warm that. soup yeah it's like a hearty that's kind of like a very idealistic s- scenario yeah, so, camping. yeah you're all sitting there in the morning having a nice hot soup <laughs> yeah it's so good dude um I, actually i did want to ask one question though real quick mm-hmm. has you guys' mom seen the episode yet no i think she's, she's actually gonna be right yeah at the time of this recording she should be watching it okay because right i want to know what she thought of you being on that ice <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> because I watched, gonna... it, I watched it with my mom, and she was getting mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, I don't like you guys have never like t- stepped a little bit on a no, pond? no, no. Okay, so that's not the the issue. <laughs> the issue is the fact that regardless of how safe you think it is, if something had happened, yeah, no, it I would have that. screwed everything up. But it's like I didn't like, like... like if you were there out by yourself <laughs> and you were on the ice. That's just you making really bad decisions for yeah. yourself, okay. and you have to pay the price. All right. That's fair. But, but the minute you fall in, someone of one of us is going to have to go in there, which will inevitably will get wet. We'll be in the middle of the trail, cold, wet. Okay, okay, okay. But, okay. but like I was, okay. I was at the. Okay, no, no, hold on, hold on. I, I slowly. T- you saw that I slowly tested the ice, and I never wandered like more than a couple feet from the shore. So it's not like I was going to the deep Wait. part. Okay. Like at the worst, it would have been like my knees or something. I just you know? don't understand the benefit. Like, what? Well, oh, the... I mean, it's fun to watch. <laughs> you got, you gotta, you gotta go out on an icy pond a little bit. I mean, it's not like I trounced on there and like did ballet I, or something. I thought, the, <laughs> I just... thought the ice was only like maybe at most six inches deep, which is why I was confused why you guys were freaking out. How deep was the water? It just seemed like. It was too hard to tell. I don't think it would have been, like, at least in the area I was standing in, mean, I really don't like think a, it would have been that deep. If it was like a bog. Like, if I was in the middle of it, I get yeah, that. Yeah. But. I mean, it's not like you're, I, I don't know. It's, well, I'm, well, it was probably, Thomas always got my back. <laughs> probably <laughs> Actually, nothing to worry Thomas. about, but still, it was just... <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Like, you don't want to get wet in a cold <laughs> camping trip, but... Yeah. I, I was, well, it's like, it's just basically like, if someone else is going to go out of their way to make my camping trip experience <laughs> worse, then I don't want you to do that. I just, I thought it would seem clear I was like being careful. And well, like, yeah, no. Not I mean, wandering he, out. In the I mean, middle. yes, from your perspective, it seemed careful, but you just, you just have to keep in mind. I'll that's the other I'll, I'd like to say for the record that we got several comments about your moonwalking. So, um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a yeah, nice it was worth it. It's a very it good moonwalk. <laughs> <laughs> the best moonwalking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just... It was a very icy episode. I felt like we had to experience the no, ice. I, I was just curious what your mom thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'll get an earful. <laughs> he gets an earful when he's like not wearing a scarf. <laughs> now, Thomas, I'm actually curious what you thought about the episode yeah. because... I guess I guess this is a perspective that me, Andrew, and Robbie really don't get as often. Yeah, yeah. Is that the <laughs> the episode from completely fresh, a it, completely fresh perspective? In fact, someone was saying that we should do commentaries of Thomas watching the episodes, which is a great idea. <laughs> commentaries really of Thomas fun. watching. <clears throat> yeah, like the ones he's not on, just have him comment. Oh, that really would comment. be really fun. Um, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So I watched this morning, and. <laughs> <laughs> So already I watched it this morning, you know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not two out of ten. I'm not upset I wasn't there. Um, I it, it seemed very cold from a scenery point of view. It it didn't look spectacular. I mean, because because the scenery didn't look so spectacular. But the dang, we're getting the, the more I watched it. Yeah, and and this is coming from me, so it's like you, I have no business to talk. Um, <laughs> but the more I watched it, the more I picked up on like these 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 hints of ice and ice as a theme throughout, and that's when I really started yeah. to like the shots of everything drenched in ice and everything covered. Um, those shots of leaves. My favorite was the one where you were cracking off the leaf, the frozen leaf into two. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I love that. But you know, it's it's not really a colorful episode, and it's not supposed to be, and, mm. and that's fine. But it's not like um, it's not like your uh, New River Gorge episode, which is just bursting with color. Um, mm-hmm. But that, like, you call that out in the commentary, and I think that's fine. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's. A, I think I especially mentioned that one just because mm-hmm. it's an interesting thought, but two just because like that is such a common Midwestern experience, and a lot of our episodes mm-hmm. have had that same sort of drab yeah, and, color and tone. That's one of the things that you don't get with a lot of other YouTube channels too. I mean, not. I, I'm, tooting my own horn here but it's like uh <laughs> you know you a lot of times we go and we showcase the most beautiful places on earth which are vibrant which are breathtaking and this was this is home for a lot of americans and this is what they're used to and so yeah. you know when you have <coughs> you guys go out with a camera like this and you're able to portray that it kind of makes it feel more real it legitimizes it it says you know we might not have breathtaking scenery but for us, this is an experience, and an experience that you Californians can't get. For better or for worse. Adventure archives. It won't take your breath. <laughs> hey, but you, but you are able uh, well, to take your breath away. I mean, that, that's, that's the thing no, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm always amazed by you guys. You're able to take such a boring experience and make it very watchable. Adventure, <laughs> average adventure archives. Average, uh, an average, average adventure archives. archives. <laughs> uh, well, so what, what was your favorite part of the episode? Um, Actually, we should all just do a go around. Say yeah, come, come, back to me, come back to me. Okay. So mine actually might be the shots of us talking inside of our shelters, both you and your hammock and me and mine. I don't know, for some reason, I really like those shots where it oh, feels like you're inside have, the shelter. I have to give some behind the scenes on that because mm-hmm. it's just... The thought of it is hilarious, but the shots of me talking in my hammock, Andrew's literally at the foot of my hammock with his head popped through the bottom entry with his camera and just like through the little at me. slit. Like. So I'm sitting there like lying and talking. It was very, it was very yeah, common. Uh, I'd say that and also the the food scene and the setting up camp the first night were both really good because Robbie, you were saying we should we intentionally like put effort into interesting shots and it really mm-hmm. paid off. Yeah, that was funny oh, yeah. how just, like, little camera moves of, like, unpacking and cooking the fried mm-hmm. rice and stuff. Like, my mom, mm-hmm. when we were watching it together, she even pointed out, like, without me prompting or anything, she's like, oh, wow, that was really cool. What'd you do there with the the fried rice? Like, we were doing the slow yeah, motion yeah, yeah. stuff and the pans oh, yeah, and everything. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, cinematography-wise, uh, my favorite shot was with the horses because it has that crunchy guitar in it. <laughs> just the guitar goes in. You're like, yeah, look at those epic horses. I love that part. Wait, that's at the very beginning. It's a very, oh, very, very beginning. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you'll, there's a, that one guitar hit, and it hits right with the horses. And then I also like the walking towards the cemetery because I just love 
cheesy slow motion hiking. <laughs> oh yeah. And then um but just overall my favorite thing about the episode is just like the funny random moments that we had like when we get to that one camp and then you're like the Lannisters will attack the oh, yeah. that, was, that, was my favorite part. that was my favorite part yeah that, that was, was good so I funny. totally forgot about that until I saw that was so the, funny. Yeah. the episode <laughs> that, I was cracking up so hard when you did that I was trying to remember because when we saw that I was like wait oh yeah we stayed here and we ate hot pot and I was like wait no wait that was the trip after yeah, that yeah 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 <laughs> Man, that would have been a good hot pot. That would have been great, yeah. <laughs> but you should bring, like, a tablecloth from now on. And just Dude, that would be so drape it funny. Over. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, man, my, I think my favorite part... Um, I really liked the morning scene, the second morning scene. Just, like, the whole of it. Because I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it kind of captured this feeling of us kind of becoming a bit more accepted accepted um accepting well yeah accepting of our current situation of resigned we were (laughs) yeah (laughs) it because like you know like typically if you see someone and they're camping and they're cold they'd be complaining and Mm -hmm. things like that but you know we we got we've reached kind of that point where we're bit more just like we accept it and we know that you got just got to get through that moment yeah, yeah. have that hot soup yeah start packing up and things like that did we even complain this episode i feel like this is completely <laughs> complaining. i think the only bit of complaining we did was when we like would recount our our nighttime sleeping experience <laughs> yeah. be like man my feet were cold but <laughs> people like i we always get comments where it's like you guys complain too much i mean not a lot but we i see comments here and there and it's like <laughs> well part of that is because like, there is an experience there we want to convey. It's not necessarily that, like, we mind it. Like, we know that's part yeah, of the experience. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. But you you got to convey it, and it's kind of fun to watch yeah, someone, like, yeah. griping about what's happening. What? what? Oh, sorry, I was Thomas, going to say something? I'm glad I wasn't with you, because I would have complained a lot. You know, the, the cold <laughs> the cold doesn't bother me all that much. It's damp cold. And that looked like damp, yeah, damp, yeah. damp <laughs> cold. The dampness yeah. is definitely... Was it damp? I don't think it was particularly damp. That uh, one was The next one was the, really the first night was, I think. But yeah. And after it rained a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. It's, it's that cold uh, where it just seeps into all your clothes and you just can't escape it. It's just yeah. part of you. Yeah, I don't think it was really that. I think that was more the... You'll, you'll see in the next okay. episode with the snow. That was... Yeah. You would have hated that. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, like I, I said, snow. after that trip, I went out and I bought fleece pants. And man, those pants were really nice on the, oh, right. on the next trip. you had the waterproof ones, too. Well, it's just... I didn't realize how good a layer of fleece would be on your legs, mm. but it makes everything stay warm. Because you know how, like, usually after a day of hiking in the cold, it's like your legs feel okay, but when you actually touch them, they're actually mm-hmm. really cold? It's like, that That wasn't the case. It was yeah. really comfortable. So if you guys, if we do a cold winter camping episode, I recommend I've, getting the I, pair of fleece. I've also I hate like, snow. <laughs> it's cold and it's damp and it gets everywhere. By the way, I had, a, I had that uh, shout out in my Saddleback Butte. I don't know if you picked up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've got a few attack oh, own references, yeah. people who recognize it. Oh, good. One of the problems <laughs> I get when I'm cold, and this is something that's actually hereditary, my dad gets it too, is, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see it, but, well, you guys can't see it because I'm not on there. But when it gets cold, there's something that goes on with the blood in my hands. And, mm. like, even now, my hands are, it's probably, what, maybe six, upper 60s in my room right now. And I'm squeezing <laughs> my hands, and... You know, they they change color. They change color and they they become white when I like put pressure on them, and then when I go, mm. that's normal. I, I think uh, that's pretty my, normal, right? Mine are pretty that... distinct, though. You'll, you'll I'll, I'll show you guys next week. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I guess we'd have to see just how much of a difference. But I mean, from a biological standpoint, that makes sense because if you're cold, and you've got like blood, more blood going through your fingers to kind of warm them up. You're gonna see a more noticeable difference when you're squeezing your my, hands because you're squeezing that blood but out. But I mean, it's normal. No, but, it but my blue. turn. Yeah, blue. I'm doing it right now, and it's like. <laughs> in, in, oh, in, oh well, in, we in have to pro. show that to us at <laughs> some that point hap- because <laughs> I got that, that laser. That, that happens with my dad too. I mean, right now it's 60, and my hand, like, oh. I put some pressure on it, and it's white and stays white for a few seconds. Hmm. I do feel like it probably helps having like a good circulatory system that can pump your mm. blood around or something. But. So wait, Thomas. Uh, well, well, let me just get right on that. I'll just go ahead and get myself a new circulatory system. We'll get that installed system. right away. Th- Thomas, what was right, your so favorite part? Setting of that aside thing? the Lannister Lannister part, which I cracked up during. Um, I liked it when you guys came up to the ridge and you said, "Oh, this looks just like the the ridge that 
we came last time and you had the juxtaposition oh. between the two. Um, I like that part. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd say my favorite part, though, was watching you guys uh, eat at the end the at the restaurant. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. The, the I can really relate my, to that my, food. <laughs> my only complaint was you guys didn't name the restaurant. And I... I Oh my God! We did. And I feel like they deserved a shout oh. out. So, Robbie, what was the name of that restaurant? Crap! It's called Trojan Horse. Okay. It's in Bloomington, Indiana. It's just downtown Bloomington, uh, right in the heart of the university. Okay. <clears throat> and it's my favorite, or w- one of my favorite. And, that, and that's why I wanted the shout. I was like, okay, what is it? What is it? <laughs> it's. I can't believe we forgot <laughs> to say that. That's so stupid. <laughs> just put a card in yeah. it. We'll be fine. Dang. I I thought. You said it. Maybe I missed. And maybe it. I maybe just I missed didn't it. hear it. But I don't think but I did no, actually. I mean, but yeah, I, maybe yeah. I missed it too. <laughs> <laughs> we we're just so eager yeah, to get inside yeah. and eat. <laughs> it's making me hungry. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go get some food right after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. Oh, oh, I did have one more thing to add actually with the Hoosier episode, and I know this probably was totally unintentional, but especially on the third day when it was really sunny. And you had a lot of the frozen droplets. But I noticed a lot of, like, um, I guess intentional blur and depth of mm-hmm. field. And oh yeah, yeah. because of that and all of, like, the, the bright sun and, and, and the, the droplets in the distance, it made it, it made it feel like it was really, like, like it was, like, some sort of fantasy or dream yeah, setting. Yeah, like some mystical sort mm-hmm. of. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 you know how, like, in a TV show when they try to portray someone's having a dream or a yeah, memory yeah. and it's kind of got, got this hazy look it yeah. almost felt like that i love that aesthetic yeah. like the bokeh balls and like the depth of feel i love it it's very sparkly yeah. that's really the term yeah bokeh it, it's balls? bokeh isn't it like a Japanese yeah the balls term? you call those bokeh balls but <laughs> the, the blurring is just called bokeh yeah <laughs> although okay. people people Wait, oh, argue I thought it... over how you pronounce it some people say bokeh oh. some people say bokeh Wait, isn't it rooted in Japanese though? Is shouldn't there be any? That's what I would think, but I never actually looked it up, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't are they are bokeh balls different from lens flares? Yeah, yeah. Lens flares oh. are just the colored flares from light. Bokeh balls are like uh-huh. uh, there's none in my view, but it's like it's like yeah, diffused, diffused light. light that's in a circle. Oh, okay. <clears throat> huh. Never thought about that. I guess that's something. I love the way it looks. Yeah. <laughs> like that, the the look of that is how I want my music to sound. <laughs> like some hipster yeah. nostalgic dream. <laughs> my music to sound the way that looks. <laughs> and I want my food to taste right, like well, it awesome. looks. <laughs> <laughs> Need some boba tea. <laughs> Poke ball tea. <laughs> well, I think all in all, that episode actually turned out pretty I good. I so Um mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah good Thomas. Time. No, Tom, it, was a, it was a thoughts, great episode. But, um, <laughs> no, we're, just, we're just joking. <laughs> but, well, like I said at the beginning, I was like, I forgot everything about that trip. But once I watched it, I was like, wow, that mm-hmm. actually ended up being pretty good. Um, any last I'm thoughts you guys I'm excited to take you guys uh, someplace in California. I think you guys are going to love it. It's going to be a little tough because yeah. we've got some uphill yeah, hikes, but uh, it's going to be worth it. By the time this awesome. podcast out is out, we yeah. might have already gone there. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, awesome. Yeah. So maybe uh, next episode we'll probably be discussing our next, whatever the next one is, which is going to be, um, it's Seneca Rocks and Spruce Knob. Well, Spruce Knob. Yeah. Right. Well, no, no, Seneca and Seneca. Creek. Just Seneca Rocks. Whatever. Seneca Rocks. We'll go with that. <laughs> whatever it is. And then something out in California, <laughs> which uh, I don't know. We can we can leave that as. A Let, we'll be going somewhere. <laughs> here's a here's a hint. <laughs> It's a surprise for us if, too. But. If we're good and we're more consistent about these podcasts, <laughs> Here's that's a what's going to be you. happening. It's, I think it's big. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. It's big. Oh, <laughs> good hint. Good hint. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us here on Campfire Chronicles. Again, I'm Brian. We got Andrew. We got. Robbie, <laughs> Yo, Thomas, <laughs> maybe it'll like switch. Uh, maybe, <laughs> like at some point, they'll just hover above us and switch sides. <laughs> but yeah, no, thank you so much for joining us. Um, be sure to like the video, comment with your thoughts and questions, subscribe to our channel if for some reason you're not yet. <laughs> and also, as we mentioned earlier, join our Patreon community because we actually we we do have a lot of really cool stuff happening there. We've yeah. got um, 
weekly live streams, weekly updates. Hoosier bloopers are worth seeing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bloopers, commentaries. The bloopers are like early eight access. minutes long. Or maybe it's almost ten minutes yeah. long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's, it's, like yeah. a sixth of the episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's that's because we mess yeah. up all the time. No. Um, but yeah, no, you, you get to vote on special episodes once in a while, <laughs> once in a blue moon. Got, did we finish voting on the next, the most recent one? Actually, no. We need to talk about that at some point and set a deadline. Coming but anyway, soon. the point is, all of that is for two dollars, and like you get even more if you pay yeah. more. So, it's it's a it's a whole party. There's like go go dancers. It's a lot of fun. And, yeah, it's a, uh, <laughs> no <laughs> actual go go dancers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also, um, you know, it, it's not a huge deal if you can't uh, support us through yeah. Patreon at the moment. But if you want to contact us, you can reach us. Uh, through Facebook. <laughs> through Facebook, yes. At facebook.com slash adventure archive. Yeah. yeah. And then we also have... I, well, we've got other stuff, media, but just so we got... don't do Twitter. <laughs> we don't look at our Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do, no, we, do we even no. post no, things on Twitter? No, I think our point? YouTube automatically <laughs> okay. posts things to Twitter. We do not look oh, at the Twitter. Okay. Like, if you want to reach us, make sure you send a Facebook message or an email. Yeah. yeah. Facebook, Facebook is also a great way to stay yeah. updated on upcoming events and like yeah. meetups, which might be happening yeah. pretty soon. So yeah. meetups, we might yeah. have to discuss um, that next time. Yeah. And lastly, if you want to really, really help us, uh, consider posting some of our videos to Reddit, uh, to hiker forums, oh, to yeah. places that they're not already on. Basically, we'd love to share it with other people, but we can't really just go out and share. Hey, watch our video, and everyone's going to be like, Nah, no. Yeah. yeah. We, need, we need someone else. To <laughs> if you like it, you know, we're not telling you to do it if you don't like it. <laughs> But uh, if you do like it, please consider. Yeah. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My suggestion, if you don't like it, just ignore yeah. us. Pretend we don't it, exist. It's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up and ignore us. <laughs> <laughs> and then ignore us. <laughs> okay, no, but thank you guys so much for listening or we'll watching see. if you're on YouTube. Bye. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Yep.